Hey guys, UE4 Mentor here. Today I'll show you how you can create easy blend materials, which are awesome looking with the help of the Megascans plugin. Have fun watching! So first of all we need to install Bridge, which is made by Quixel. Therefore go to quixel.com and go to products, Bridge, and you can download it for free. Once it's downloaded, just install it. Yes. Wait for the installation to be finished and then open up Bridge. Once it's opened up, go to the sign in in the top right and sign in with your Epic Games account. With your Epic Games account, it's completely free. You can use all of the assets from Quixel Bridge, so you don't have to pay for anything here, which is really great. Click on sign in now, sign in with your Epic Games account, type in your mail and your password. Now it's loading and you're signed in. Now we need to install the plugin for Unreal Engine. Um, go to any surface for example or to any asset in general. Once you've opened up the asset, go to the bottom right and click on the settings icon. Click on export settings and now set up your export target. Your export target will be Unreal Engine. There are a few other options here, which we don't care for now. Then choose the engine version. For me, it's 4.26. Then choose the plugin location. The plugin location is where your engine is installed. So for me, it's in the Epic Games folder. UE 4.26, then engine folder, and then plugins. And select choose this folder. Once you've done this, open up your project, go to your settings in the top bar, choose plugins, and search for mega scans. I've already enabled it. You have to click this checkbox here. When you do so, the editor asks you to restart it. And once you've restarted, you have this Megascans icon in the top. Next step is to open up the Megascans settings. Because before we import any materials from Bridge, we need to enable all the displacement maps. Therefore, just click the checkbox beside displacement, move the window out of the view, and then open up Bridge again. And now we will start choosing our blend materials. So we can blend in total three materials together. We have the ground layer, the first layer and the second layer. And then on top of it, we will add a puddle layer. But for this, we don't need to import any material. Now choose any material you want to export to Unreal Engine. For me, I will start with a flat surface. The dry grass ground, for example, is a good one here. Then I will select another one with a bit more depth to it. Let's say the mossy dead roots. And then I will add some, some bigger rocks here, just to have a bit of variation on our surface. Once you've selected all your materials you want to export, just go down to the resolution selection and choose any resolution you like. And hit on export. When the export is finished, go back to your Unreal project. And there you will have another folder called Megascans. In this folder, you will find all the surfaces we've exported and we're good to go to create our blend material. For that, we need to select all the surfaces we want to have in our blend material. It's easier when you choose a filter here. All the materials are instances, so we choose the material instance filter. And now we select our base layer first, then we select our second layer and our third layer. Now the only thing we need to do to create a blend material is to click on the Create Material Blend button in the Megascan settings. A new folder will appear in your main content folder called Blend Materials and there you have your blend material. Before you use it, you need to have a mesh which is properly tessellated. 
I've already created one in my tutorial folder. Let's disable the filter, open up the mesh, open up the forest ground mesh. So this is the mesh I've prepared. Let's check the tessellation here. As you see, this has a lot of vertices. The reason for this is that we will use the mesh paint to create the blend material on the surface and therefore we need to paint on all those vertices here and the more you have the detailed it will be. Be a little bit careful here because all the vertices will have an impact on performance so don't make your mesh too tessellated. I'll add a download link in the description for the mesh we are using here that you can play around with it with your own blend material. Now that we have our mesh ready, we'll go back to our scene. I've used the standard scene here from the default project. I'll delete the floor and add the forest ground mesh here. Just align it a bit. All right, now we have to assign the material instance to the mesh. Therefore, go to your blend materials again, select the instance and assign the instance to your mesh. This is all the preparation we need to do for our mesh. Now we have to set up the blend material instance properly, open it up. And now you see all the instance settings on the right, starting with global, the blend controls, the base layer, the middle layer, our top layer, and the puddle layer, and all the displacement options. If you wouldn't have checked the enable displacement checkbox, you would have missed the displacement maps, which are imported when you export your material from Bridge. This displacement wouldn't be available for you, but if you missed it, you can just open up the Megascan settings, enable the displacement, export again from Bridge, and you will have the displacement map here. Now back to our Blend Material instance. I'll quickly go through the most important settings here. So for the global, we will use the puddle layer later. So this is another layer which comes on the top, which adds some water to the surface. The blend controls are needed to blend all your layers properly together. The base layer is the first layer we've selected. As you see, all the maps are already assigned to it. The ambient occlusion map is not needed for now. Then we have some other settings for each layer. For example, the rotation angle, you can rotate the texture. The normal th strength is to boost up your normal map here. Then we have some tiling options here and uh, some offset, offset options here just to move the texture to the right, left and top bottom. But this is not needed for now. But what we need, let's check back to our scene. You see that the texture is pretty huge. So for our base material, uh, for our base settings, I will adjust a bit the tiling here. I think a good starting point is 10 and 10. Let's go back to our scene. Yeah, this looks already pretty good. When you go a bit nearer, you see all the tiny details, which is perfectly fine. Let's go back to the instance. And for now, I will just use the, those tiling options 10 and 10 for all the other layers. Let's check the checkbox for the middle layer. Set up the tiling to be 10, 10 and for the top layer as well. You can adjust every layer how you want, but when I change something for the base layer, I will also change it for all the other layers just as a starting point. We will adjust it later in case the textures are too big or too small. Um, we will adjust the middle and the top layer again, but for now 1010 should be good for all the layers. For the puddle layer, you have different other settings here but for now we will leave it as default, but you could change uh, all the liquid details here. You could also change the uh, small wave normal texture. You could change the color of the water or you can change the wave scale, the wave speed, the normal strength, basically everything you need for a perfect scene. 
Then we have all the displacement settings at the bottom, our base, middle and top layer. And we can also set up the value for the unified displacement here. This will set the intensity of the displacement map. So a good starting point for this would be 40. You have some other settings at the top where you can add different adjustments for each layer. For example, when you check the adjustments for the base layer, as you can see, you can change the tint of the texture and you have other controls as well, like saturation, brightness, contrast. Uh, useless is not used at all. So this is just a vector which is not used in the master material. So you don't need to touch this value here. But for the tutorial, we won't need it. So I uncheck it again. And then we are good to go to paint on the mesh. To do so, switch the mode to the mesh paint tool, select the brush here. And the first thing you wanna do is under vertex painting, click this little arrow to switch the white and black color. Then we need to set up our brush settings. The size is always relative to the mesh size. So the bigger your mesh is, the bigger is your brush. Let's leave it for 0.2 here. Next thing is the strength of the brush and the third one is the brush falloff, which is basically the intensity of the brush from your center compared to the outline of your brush. The most important thing here are the channels we paint on. The red one is basically our first layer, the green one our second and the blue one is our water layer with which we can paint the water puddles on the top. For now, just click on the red channel to paint the first layer on our base layer. And to paint it, just hold the left mouse button and pull it over your mesh. To delete it again, just hold the shift button and click the left mouse button and you will delete the painted texture again. But for now, we just need the first layer. Then we will also paint on the green layer the second layer. I think it's a bit too big, so I'll go back to my blend material instance, go to the top layer and change the tiling to, let's say, 15. Save it and go back. Looks much better. What you also can do is to select both of those layers and paint the texture together and then just select one for me it's top layer and delete it and below will be the other texture here and that's how you vertex paint your mesh then we also have a few other options in the material instance let's close the mesh here open up this at the side and scroll up search for the blend controls at the top and select both of them. With the blend controls, you can set up how the blending between layers will happen. So for the first one, it already says base mid layer layer blend controls, which is the blend controls for the flat surface here and our first layer here. I think the edge for the base layer and the first layer is a bit too hard. So I crank the blend amount up. go for five for now. We can also adjust the edge by decreasing the strength of the brush. But for now we will use the blend amount and let's go also to our top layer here and adjust the blend amount to the first layer. A bit too much but for now I will go for four. You can also adjust the blend contrast for a perfect result. When all the settings are fine, you can start painting on your mesh however you like. I will speed up the process and during painting you can also adjust all the values in the material instance. So I suggest to leave this open, make it small and put it to the bottom and then you can start vertex painting your mesh.
After you're done with the vertex painting, you can add some puddles to give it a final touch. For that, just select the blue channel to paint on. Make sure that your puddle layer is selected here and then start painting your puddles into the scene. What you also can do is to decrease the strength to a minimum and then just paint some wetness above the rocks or wherever you want it to be to give it a kind of a shiny touch here. You can also set up the water color at the bottom. Just click the checkbox and change the liquid color. But I won't mess up around with this right now. Just make sure that your scene looks good with it and give it some final touches until you think it's totally fine for you. If you're done with it and you don't like the result for any layer, you can just go to the layer settings in your instance and change all the textures. Let's say you want to exchange the grass ground texture to something like this here. You can change the albedo map, placement map, normal map and the roughness map. And then you have a completely different look like you see here. Don't forget to save everything and we are done with the perfect blend material. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like or in case you have any questions, let me know in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye bye.